Hi everyone, welcome to the Sweet Southern Knitting Podcast. This is Jessica and this is episode one. Um, This is the Getting to Know Me podcast, but I wanted to let you guys know before you got to know me that I did film this episode in April, so I just wanted you guys to know that everyone has received their Mother's Day presents and they love them, but I didn't want my mom or grandma to see this episode, so I decided to hold off on uploading. So I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you at the end. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica and this is the first episode of Sweet Southern Knitting Podcast. Uh, This isn't just a podcast for knitting though, I do crochet. So um, if you see me look over here, I'm looking at my notes. So uh, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Jessica, I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I learned how to crochet when I was like 12 or 13 from my aunt who I was just so mystified that she could take a ball of string and a hook and make anything she wanted. I thought it was the coolest thing ever uh, so I made her teach me how to crochet and I wanted to learn how to knit years and years. I wanted to learn how to knit and I could never hack it. I tried and tried and tried. I couldn't get the two needle thing. So I just stuck with crochet. I didn't really crochet from patterns, but I did make a lot of blankets. Now that I'm older, I realized that I was designing. I made a bunch of beanies (laughs) from my head, uh, just whatever I thought would fit and design that I thought would look good. But it was really just single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. So um, about Well, in 2010, I got married, and in 2012, I was sick, and I'd had it. I wanted to learn how to knit, and I discovered Craftsy. So, I took a class on Craftsy, and I jumped into probably one of the hardest things to learn how to knit, and I did that first, and I took a Stephanie Chapal's class about knitting in the round. I think it was a hats class, and I... I decided that I was gonna learn how to knit so I watched her class and then I watched her class while learning the stitches and how to do everything manipulate the yarn and I mastered it in about three days so I went to um, and this is all on knitting needles that I had uh, in my collection from the first time I tried to learn how to knit so I went to Walmart and got some knitting needles and some yarn and I learned how to knit sitting on my couch and it was amazing and I haven't stopped since. I haven't crocheted as much as I've knit but I do love it so much. Um, I made my husband drive me downtown Charleston so that I could go to a local yarn shop. Unfortunately, all the local yarn shops that I know of have closed down. There is a quilting shop that was recently purchased and they are supposed to be carrying yarn soon. Uh, So maybe I'll have a local yarn shop eventually. But uh, that is my knitting journey. I made my husband drive me downtown so that I could get some Addy Clicks. And that was my very first set of actual knitting needles, um, other than the ones from Walmart. So, yeah, that's my crochet journey, my yarn journey, my knitting journey. Um, So, a little bit about what I use. So, I have a few sets of interchangeable knitting needles. That is mainly what I knit on, although I do have quite a selection of flat needles. And I do use DPNs for socks occasionally. I'm getting into Magic Loop though. Uh, so I have a set of added clicks. I have a set, which is one of my favorite from Clover. Uh, let me grab it. So I have this really cool cart that my mother got me for my birthday. Um, it was supposed to be for my planner items. Um, so you guys don't know, or maybe you do if you've come over from my other channel. I do have another YouTube channel that channel is called Planet, P-L-A-N-I-T, Southern. And I have an Etsy shop where I sell planner stickers and planner, well, yeah, planner stickers. I don't sell anything else. <laughs> but um, that's my other hobby that I absolutely love to do is make planner 
stuff, so I have a YouTube channel for that. But my mom got me this Ross Cog card, I believe it's called, from Michaels. And it's supposed to hold planner items, which it does. And you can't see it. It also holds all my yarn. Um, you guys can't see it. If I push it too far away, I won't be able to, to hold it or to reach it. But I like to push this around wherever I'm sitting and I can have all my knitting stuff on it. But, uh, so this is my first set of knitting needles and some are on projects, but this is my Addy Clicks. I think these are the lace version, um, but I've had these since 2012, money well spent, but I have found a new set that I absolutely love. Um, we'll get to those. Um, but this set, my mom and my grandmother got me for my birthday, and I love these. If you love wood needles, you should really check these out. Um, these are the Clover knitting needles, and I got these from Michaels. Um, you can buy them individually from Michaels, Joann's, or... I don't think Hobby Lobby. I think it's just Michael's Joanne's and AC Moore. But they twist on. So I really like that. Let's see. Oh. Yeah. So they twist on. So I really like that. They're really smooth. The join is smooth. So these are one of my favorite knitting needles. But I did just get a set of Chow Goo. Um, I was watching Grocery Girl Knits, which is my absolute favorite favorite knitting podcast. I have several, uh, but they're my favorite and I watch them. I've been catching up on all of their videos over the past couple of weeks uh, while I clean and stuff. But, um, so I was watching their pad, their podcast and Tracy was talking about Child Goo Mini Twist and those are amazing for sock needles. Um, I have them on a project, so I will show them to you when we get to the whips. But uh, that is, the, they're the coolest. I love the cord. I love the join. And it's so cool to have a set of sock needles that are um, on interchangeables because I do not really care for the, um, the stationary, um, I forget what they're called, the stationary knitting needles um, that are circulars. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. But I don't care for those. I would rather have interchangeables. I just feel like you get more bang for your buck. And when you travel, I feel like I can just take um, my child goos, my clovers, and I'm set. Because I can change the links out. I can add more cable. I can use shorter cables. So, I really like that. Um, also, I love acrylic yarn. That is mainly what I, well, I won't say mainly what I use. So here in Charleston, because we don't have local yarn shops, I only get to go to local yarn shops when I visit my parents um, in Asheville. There's one up there that I love, but I've only been like twice. And I just got started learning about like the wool and the hand dyed yarn. Um, even though I've been knitting and crocheting for a long time, um, I really use cotton, kitchen cotton, and acrylics, and stuff that I can run to Michael's, Joann's, or Hobby Lobby, or AC Moore, and grab off the shelf. Um, I like to knit gifts and baby blankets and things like that for my friends and family. So a lot of times, um, I like to use stuff that can be thrown in the washing machine. So um, you'll see a range of yarns. You'll see cheap acrylic all the way up to hand dyed yarn here on my channel and I want to keep it like that. Um, I don't think that we should limit our fiber crafts to things that are really high end or really expensive or feel pressured into only using um, certain yarns. I was in a knitting group on Facebook and I really felt like it was a bunch of yarn snobs. Like if you were using acrylic, um, you know, they really didn't want to kind of comment on your post or answer any questions that you had. So I wanted to use all types of yarns. 
So that's what you will see here on my channel. And I hope that I can show you guys some hacks and um, just, you know, things like that. Do some haul videos on what kind of yarns I use. Sorry, my computer. I'm filming on my computer today um, because my camera batteries are dead and my computer went dim. So, all right, uh, let's see. What is in my bag? That's the first thing that I wanna talk about. So right now, this is my knitting bag. It may be backwards when I'm filming, so sorry if it is. This is a planner bag um, that I got from a local planner meetup here in Charleston, the South Carolina Planners. Planet Southern is my Etsy shop. And in this, I have a whip, which I'll show you in a bit. But I have some of the, I think it's boy, really cool. I think these are the like um, balloon markers. And then I have, this is also something else that I got from um, a planner subscription that I have uh, called the Planner Society. They put in these pencil cases every month. And this is really what swaps in and out of project bags, stays beside my couch. Um, if I'm traveling, it's in my purse. So in here, when you open it up, let me put these back in so they don't fall out. So when you open it up, and you can't buy these anywhere, but it's just a pencil case. I'm sure you could get one like it on Amazon. Um, but when you open it up, it has a place here. You can put pens or pencils. And then when you, um, oh, when you fold the case over, it's just like a pencil case. All kinds of things fell out of this here. Pencil case when I held it up. So in here, I have a stitch holder. I got that from Michaels, I believe, and just a pair of, well, they're so sharp, a pair of scissors, but I'm thinking about getting another set that's not as sharp and that'll fit in here a little better. And then I have some uh, yarn ends that I use for um, stitch markers. A lot of times I'll use that in socks because they don't fall out. I got that tip from Lucy Meatby um, on Craftsy for one of her classes on socks because I just started knitting socks. I'm gonna move that down a little bit. So um, this is the Chow Goo set. These are the ones that are not on my projects but this is the knitting needles. These are the mini twists. And they are sizes triple zero, US triple zero, which is a 1.5 millimeter, double zero, zero, one, and 1.5. Those are all US sizes. And they go 1.5 millimeters, 1.75, 2.0, 2.25, and 2.5 millimeters. And these are really cool. You use these cables. The best thing about these cables is that they are like a metal chain and then they're wrapped in silicone or a plastic um, of some sort and you tighten them down with the key. Game changer for Christmas or actually probably for my birthday, I'm gonna ask for a set of these, um, you know, a bigger set for bigger projects. So I have that. Also at Michael's, I picked up this little holder it came with the purple and green, the pink and the blue stitch markers. And then I just kind of combined a few and put them in here. So I have these removable stitch markers in orange and green. I also have the keys for my Chow Goos. And I have some of these, oh, they're all sticking together. Some of these, um, of the balloon safety pin type stitch markers. But I keep it in here and it just lives in my little pencil case and um, that way I don't have to worry about it. I have some stoppers for my clover needles. I love those. 
I have a stitch gauge from my Addy Turbo, Clip Turbos. Darning needles. I have a Clover tape measure that is really cool. Comes out and then it just snaps back in. I have a, this is a um, Susan Bates. This is a life changing tool. So it's a knitting needle on one end and then a crochet hook on the other. You can just get in and fix your, pick up drop stitches. You can knit right off of it. I love that. I use it all the time. Then I also have these erasers that I will stick. There's holes all in here. Um, but I stick these on the ends of my knitting needles so that my stitches won't fall off. I also have stoppers for my child goos. This little genius uh, child goo heart so that you can twist your um, needles on. I have a yarn threader in case you can't get the yarn through. A random crochet hook. These are, I think, size US zero. These are my DPNs for my sock needles. And then I have a cable needle in case I ever need one. So this is my necessities. This is what comes with me whenever I'm crocheting um, in the wild or knitting in the wild here lately. I do love crochet. But I have not crocheted in a long time. Um, I need to, but I have not crocheted in quite a while. So that is what's in my bag. So let's move on to my yarn enhancements. Stash enhancements, I believe is what I'm gonna call it, but it's recently purchased yarn. Recently, uh, because I've been watching all these knitting podcasts, I have purchased quite a bit of yarn uh, since January. Uh, not a ton, but a little bit more than usual. Uh, so let's start with uh, the stuff that I picked up from AC Moore. We'll start there because that was my most recent haul. So, um, I love to make socks, and my grandmother loves my handmade socks. She actually stole my very first pair of socks. Um, I made, let's see, when did I go there? I think it was around Christmas when I made my very first sock, and I went for Christmas, and she saw me knitting on it. She asked me what it was. And I actually bound off, or actually Kitchenered, my first sock toe and tried it on and it fit great. And she wanted to try it on and absolutely loved it. And I left and came back because I'm originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina, and that's where she lives. And I came back to Charleston with nothing but a sock on the needles. <laughs> so I went to AC Moore and picked up quite a lot of sock yarn um some of it she already has because i've sent it to her but this is the patton's croy socks this is the singing the blues stripes and i just thought she would love this color i also picked up the gray marl and I actually went back. This is for my mother's Mother's Day present. And I'm not even telling her that I'm starting this podcast until after Mother's Day. So she will not see what I've made her. You'll see it in my finished objects. But uh, this is what I use to make my mother her Mother's Day present with. So I love, love that. Then I picked up some... A new to me yarn. I haven't seen this before. Uh, this is from Lion Brand Yarns and it's called A Touch of Merino. And oh, the Patton's yarn, just in case y'all want to know, it's a 75% washable wool and a 25% nylon. This is a 90% acrylic, 10% merino wool. 
and I picked this up in black and uh, this is for my mother-in-law's Mother's Day present. While I was there, I also picked up this, um, it's in the color Grape. It is also from Lion Brand. It's also a new to me yarn. I'm not sure how long it's been out. See if I can get it. Uh, well, that's kind of showing the color. It's like a magenta purple. Um, I don't know if you can really see the color on the screen, but uh, this is called ZZ Twist. And this is, I think it's 100%, yeah, 100% acrylic. And I will get into what I'm making with that in a little bit. This is also something, oh, from AC Moore. We'll finish what I got from AC Moore. This is Red Heart Scrubby, Scrubby Cotton. And I love to knit dishcloths with this. They are amazing. They don't scratch your dishes, but they really get in there and get everything off. So I love this yarn and I knit with it all the time. So I also went over to Michael's and this is a bulky yarn. This is 60% acrylic, 20% nylon, and 20% merino wool. And this is a Karen Pantone set and I like it because they give you like the Pantone colors so you can see what that is but I picked up three of these and I'm gonna use them to make um, some hats that's what I'm gonna do with these and um, I'll talk more about you know this uh, yarn whenever we get to the end of the podcast but this is also uh, Barocco Vintage. I picked this up years ago. The first two skein, uh, skeins of this um, I picked up years ago at my local knitting shop before it closed down. Um, and I absolutely love this. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon. And it's their Vintage line. And this is the color, um, I think it's Grapefruit is what it's called. They don't have the name on here, but when you go to their website, um, it's grapefruit. It's like an orange, rusty fall color. I love it. Um, I started out with this knitting a blanket, but I have other plans, and I actually just got this off of Amazon. So after all of this sock yarn was purchased, I was watching Meanwhile at the Castle, which is another podcast that I really love, and um, I can't remember their names, but they were talking about, uh, one of the girls was talking about the yarn uh, that she just put up in her shop. This is from Candy Shop Yarns, um, and I absolutely, I had to have this yarn. So my aunt that taught me how to crochet, me and her, we loved to, when I was growing up, to watch movies together. And our favorite movie was, um, well, Gone with the Wind, Southern, you know. Uh, but one of our other favorite movies was Mary Poppins. And Candy Shop Yarns has their liquid candy. And this is the Simple Syrup Base. And this is called Nowhere to Go But Up. This is absolutely beautiful. It's an 80% um, superwash merino and 20% nylon. And then she gives you a, a little mini for the contrasting toes and heels. I have only knit one sock uh, pattern. I've knit it quite a few times, but I've only knit one sock pattern. And that sock pattern is from Lucy Neatby, and it is from one of the classes on Craftsy that I that I watched so that I could learn how to knit socks. I am going to try the Smooth Operator socks. Um, you can find that on Ravelry. I can't for the life of me remember who the pattern is by, um, but I'll put it down here on the screen. I'm going to try to knit that with contrasting uh, heels and toes and maybe a little bit of the cuff in this yellow 
and uh, with the fish lips kiss heel because I want that to be my first time using the fish lips kiss heel. So I ordered this yarn and then I also ordered this is um, the same base. It's the Simple Syrup base, which is 80% um, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. This is Frosting and Sprinkles. And you get these two minis. So I'm going to do a set with the, with the pink and a set with like the teal green. Because I think that if you just look at these colors, it looks so good. But if you only look at these, the pink and, here we go, the pink and the blues, that looks amazing too. So I'm going to knit, um, and these are for me. These are for me. I have one pair of socks, and they're, they're not even done yet. You'll see them in my, my foes. You'll see them. So that is that. And let's move into um, whips. So my first whip that I'm going to show you guys is, is for my grandmother. Um, it's technically a hoe. I'm sorry, y'all. Some of these knitting slangs and terms just get to me. I, I, sometimes I'm like a 14-year-old boy. Um, so... Uh, I have made and blocked one sock um, for my grandma and this is kind of the pattern from Lucy Neatby and then I just kind of customized it after I started you know getting into it so I did a garter stitch cuff because my grandmother has problems finding socks that will fit her feet and her ankles especially she doesn't like anything extremely tight so I did a garter stitch because it won't pull in on her foot but it'll stay up and I just did the normal toe um, from the pattern and a heel flap and gusset so um I have in a ziplock bag because I'm too cheap to buy project bags. I have the rest of my Chow Goo set. So in here, they give you a little bag to keep your Chow Goo's in, but I just keep them in my pencil case. And then they have a little ruler and like needle gauge. I keep that in here and keep that with this sock so that I can just take this upstairs and I don't have to worry to, you know, knit in bed. And I only have to have this one thing. But the sock yarn that I am knitting with is from Hobby Lobby. And it is, I'm looking for the thing. It is the tur turquoise jacquard um, from Patton's. It's the, from their Croy sock. But I have just cast on the garter and I'm almost ready. I'm a couple of rows from uh, knitting, or from moving on to just the stockinette uh, cuff. And you'll see I have a red mercenized cotton for my beginning of round. And then this is the Chow Goo needle. Look how just so thin that is and it doesn't hold its shape which is the most amazing thing about it it doesn't hold a shape if you have to throw it in your bag um it's so it's just awesome and they're super long i like that about them as well and i've already got chocolate on them but anyways and these are the one no the two mil these are the two millimeter so that is my whip i'm hoping to finish this by mother's day so that i can give this set to my grandma for mother's day um i'm doing something really cool so i'm knitting you'll see my mom and my mother-in-law both i'm knitting the a gleam shawl um, which is also on Ravelry, and whew, I'm just all over the place today. 
Um, so I'm knitting them uh, the Gleam shawl, and uh, I'm giving them that with some homemade wool wash. I found a wool wash recipe on Pinterest, and I tried it out for myself, and I like it. Um, so I'm giving them a little jar of that with some lotions or something. I don't know, candle maybe. I haven't quite got that far yet. But that's what they're getting for Mother's Day. Why did I tell you that? Welcome to, instead of Sweet Southern Knit Knitting Podcast, it's the Southern Girls Lost Her Mind. Welcome to that ride. <laughs> so in my little bag here that's not even for planning, I have my, I mean not even for knitting, I have the Touch of Merino, and this is the A Gleam Shawl. Oh, I remember what I was going to tell you. Um, I do. I am on Ravelry. And I will link my Ravelry down below. But I think my username is J McKinsley. That's my last name. So it's M-C-K-I-N-S-L-E-Y. So J McKinsley on Ravelry. And I have started a Ravelry group for the podcast so go and i'll open up a chatter thread i think if i can figure out how to do that you guys can introduce yourself to me because i would love to make new knitting friends because i don't have any local knitting friends that we get together and knit all the time i do have a girl in my knitting i mean my planner group that when we meet locally we talk about knitting but that's about the extent of it so this is my a gleam shawl. I was trying to get it where you guys can see it. It is kind of hard because it's black yarn. But there you go. I am on the I think it's third section, the second section of short rows right here I like this one because it has drop stitches it is a DK weight pattern and this uh, the touch of merino is a DK weight so I can't wait to finish this and show you guys I started this one on the 5th which was Friday and I'm almost finished I should finish this one the next like two days so I have that whip going and then I have another half finished whip which is um, from one of my favorite yarns and I've already this was the first time I'd ever like hand wound a skein of yarn before and it got all tangled up and I had to cut it into several small pieces. <laughs> So that I wouldn't waste the yarn. Um, but this is Lemonade Shop. And I will put in a picture right here of what it looks like when I first got it. And I posted it on Instagram and it was really cute. I will post a picture of that. Um, but here is what I have so far on my second sock. You'll see I have my stitch markers over here. But... This is what I have done so far on my second sock. This one is for me. So I did uh, the two by two rib for the cuff. And I'm almost finished with the, as long as I want the leg so that I can um, separate for my heel flap. Let me show you what the first sock looks, looks like. This is the very first one from hand dyed yarn and you can't really tell but it's like a, a fuchsia purple color but the rainbow I have such a long wish list for uh, lemonade shop yarns her yarn is just it's so soft it knits up amazing 
and um, it's actually I took a up close picture of my sock um, for my um, intro. So that's the this is the yarn for my intro. Uh, real quick, uh, my well I have two this and another whip. Um, this one I'm knitting on my clovers. This is a pattern that is from a dishcloth, just a single, I think it's a free pattern on um, Ravelry where you knit, it's just a corner to corner dishcloth. But I'm going um, for longer and um, I think I did uh, 200 stitches and then started my decreasing. For the life of me, I can't find the ball band for this yarn. It's just acrylic yarn from my stash and it's got little, you know, let me see if I have another ball of this down here. I cannot find the ball band to save my life, but uh, anyway, this is just the acrylic yarn from Michaels, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, AC Moore could be. It's probably a Lion Brand yarn. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it kind of has, I doubt it, but it kind of has like a little white satin that runs through it. Um, I have my ends wound in as I go, but I haven't clipped them yet because I do want to wash it and block it first. But that is for a little baby at my church. That's going to be in her bag. She, I'm just, when you have a bunch of works in progress, she works on the ones first that you want to do and then things that you don't really want to get done. Uh, you just don't work on as much and that's just one that I just haven't worked on as much. So um, let me grab my next whip. So I was at Michael's one day with some girlfriends and I saw this yarn and loved the colors of this yarn. So I bought it. These are the Karen Cakes. You can only get them at Michael's. Um, th this is Jordan Almonds. This is one of the big cakes and it was on sale for like half off. So I grabbed two. And I'm doing a center out blanket and I actually have a finished project on Ravelry in a different yarn but um, I can't really pull it out to the fullest because of the cords but it is a single I'm sorry it's a center out blanket and I just have it on on the stoppers the little clover stoppers and it's just a, a simple little center out blanket you start I started here and I didn't do the increases exactly how they did them um I did knit twos together but this is just a blanket for me for my couch for the springtime so that I have something springy and colorful. I just wish I would have finished it before Easter. Um, but anyway, um, this is Jordan Almond and it's like a light blue and a teal and a yellow and a white. And I'm going to be working on this really soon and hopefully finishing it. Or at least making more progress before the next podcast. And I'll put it on some waist yarn so I can show you guys the entire thing. So I have one more project that I want to show you guys. And it is a crochet whip. Disclaimer. I've been doing this blanket for two years. And it's for my grandmother. And eventually she'll get it for her bed. She wants a bedspread. But I think I'm only going to make it a lap blanket or a couch blanket. Because, whew. Let me show you. So this is what I have put together so far. I have 
this is the length. Of course, you can't see it, but I have these squares. This is the Irish Rose Blanket. The pattern is from Ravelry. I'm trying to, it's so heavy. I'm trying to show you guys so that you can see it. So, uh, the way that you start this, let me put this away. So, for this pattern, you start out with the flowers and you make them in the three different colors, whatever three colors that you want to do. And then you turn, you make them into a square and then you work a border. And then you take four of these pieces and you seam them together. And then you take those large squares, which end up looking like this. And you take these and you seam these together and make a blanket out of them. And I, for this, am using, cause it's just, gonna be like a bedspread or a couch blanket so I wanted to make it out of something that would wash well and again I've only been making this blanket for two years you know so I got I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby and that's the colors that she picked out the pattern that she picked out and that's what I'm using for for her blanket I also found my last whip that I'm gonna show you guys. I'm using um, my clover needles for this as well. And I'm knitting it up on a US six. No, nope, let me go get the ball band. So I am knitting this up on Loops and Threads Joy DK. This is just a yarn that I picked up one day at Michael's. It was on sale. I originally was going to make hats out of it, but then I saw this pattern and had to try it. Um, Laura Nelkin, I took a class. Well, I've taken all of her knitting classes on Craftsy, but I love her shawl patterns. But this is one of her Ravelry patterns. This is the color Latte. It's more of a grayish color instead of like a taupey color, but I am making her undulating waves. This is of course on the needle, so it's not blocked, but this is my first pattern using beads. Let's see if I can get it brighter for you guys. Um, but this is just using some teal beads that I picked up from Walmart one day and like a light gray color um, for the yarn but I just think it's a really cool pattern and I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or if I'm gonna give it as a gift but I had the yarn and I had the beads in my stash and I just wanted to kind of practice the pattern really and see if I could do some bead work. So that is that project. Let's move on to some faux. So for my faux, I have two finished objects. Oh no, I have three. Um, So I have my very first pair of socks that I knit and that I wear myself. These are the ones that I wear myself. Uh, so these are just made out of some Croy sock yarn. It's coming off black, but they are like a charcoal gray color. And they have a garter cuff and a heel flap and gusset. And this is from the Lucy Meat Bee pattern uh, from her Craftsy class. So that's my first faux. My second faux is one that I just finished. Let me find a good 
pattern picture for you guys. So this is gonna be for my mom for Mother's Day. And this is the A Gleam pattern from Lisa Much, I believe is how you say her last name. And I just think it is a beautiful pattern. So this pattern I knit um, in sock weight, fingering weight yarn. I knit it in the Croy and I did block it. So um, it is blocked, but it is not to measurement, like to gauge, I know that. And I do have one stitch that I need to put down, but I just absolutely adore this pattern. I, from start to finish, knit and blocked this in five days. That is how easy this pattern is and how amazing this pattern knits up. It is a crescent shawl. So, oh. So this is my first shawl that I've ever made and I love it. I love that you can kind of wrap it around. I'm gonna make me one, um, maybe out of the blue croy, definitely, cause I like this weight and I like that I could just kinda drape it over my shoulders. It fits really well, it hugs the body well and you know, you can, tie it you can use a shawl pin i just really like it you can wear it as like a scarf you can bunch it up shawls are just they're something new for me and i've seen people y'all are laughing right now i know this is how us girls get ready in the mornings you know but i uh, i just love how you know you can kind of just jumble it up here and if you get cold you just take it off and put it on your shoulders I love it multitasking so this is what my mom is getting for Mother's Day so you guys don't tell her if you watch this podcast don't go running off and telling her what she's getting for Mother's Day so that is my very first finished shawl and uh, I have one more FO. Let me go grab that. Let me, I need to talk to you guys about it. So this next blanket I made for my little cousin. She is about two and a half weeks old, but she was about two months early. So she hasn't received her blanket yet. She's still in NICU, but I, I went with her mom, my cousin, to pick out this yarn she picked out. This is Parfait Layers from Premier. It's 100% polyester. It feels so good. And this one is in the, I just looked it up the other day. Which one is this? Bowl of Cherries is the colorway. And I looked up the free center out blanket pattern that I made with my Almond Joy or Jordan Almonds. And this is the blanket. I made this out of one skein, one ball, with a tiny bit from a second one for the ribbing. But I did not bind uh, this off correctly because it's not a square and it's supposed to be a square. But see how the ends kind of come in and make a circle? I'm not too thrilled about that part. It's totally my fault. I didn't follow the pattern exactly and I didn't bind off exactly because I thought I knew what I was doing. But this is such a warm and cozy blanket and she's gonna love it. But I'm going to make her a second one out of either maybe this yarn or a different yarn. Um, maybe for Christmas, give her and her brother um, new blankets for Christmas, maybe. So, let's move on to some wish list items. 
So let's talk about some wish list items or wish list knitting. Uh, my first wish list item is definitely some child goo, um, the bigger knitting set, so that uh, I can have an entire set of from sock weight or sock gauge all the way up to blanket gauge. That's really, really what I want. Um, so that's going to be the first thing. Also, I have a ton of lemonade shop yarn that I want to get. Let me pull it up here on my phone and show you because it is amazing yarn. I just love her stuff. So I want to get, because this is a thing, this is a whole thing. Let me pull up my Ravelry too. Have you guys ever used Ravit? R-A-V-I-T. I just found it today. And um, I think I like it. It connects your um, it connects your Ravelry to this app so that you can find stuff on your phone. So, I want to knit this shawl. I'm sorry, cardigan. I've never knit a cardigan or a sweater, you guys. I've never knit one. So, I want to get, oh my gosh, she has more yarn colors up. <laughs> okay. Stop, Jessica. So, I want to use this yarn. This is the Lemonade Shops. Uh, you know, I'll insert a picture from here. I'm gonna screenshot it. And I'll insert a picture right here. This is um, Chick Flick. I want to knit that. I want to knit Hohi Locatelli's, um, I think it's all the lights, all of the lights. I want to knit this cardigan so stinking bad, so stinking bad. Look at that. Oh, the cables and all. So, um, I want to order that Chick Flick, Chick Flick yarn and I will also insert um, a screenshot of all of the lights pattern from Hohi Locatelli. I will screenshot and put that here. So I want that yarn to knit that cardigan. So that's my first um, wish list item. I just want more hand dyed yarns from her, from um, Sisters, Hey Sisters yarn. I wanna knit their colorways, just speak to my soul. Um, also, I just want more hand dyed yarn in general. Maybe some more of the candy shop yarns. Um, I want to knit a sweater too. I want to knit a sweater. So let me look, let me find this other pattern while I'm on my phone. Um, because I have it saved in my favorites. Oh, this light rain. It's a Hohi Locatelli pattern, but it was knit by Tracy. This is the best picture that, go look at Tracy's from Grocery Girl uh, Knits. Her um, Ravelry name is Tracy Knits. Her sweat, her light rain sweater is amazing. I think this is another pattern. Oh yeah, it's from um, Hohi. It's another one from Hohi. It's her basic raglan pullover. I think that's the one, yeah. Oh, I have so many patterns on here that I want to do. Um. Anyways, this is the basic raglan pullover from Hohi Locatelli. I'm gonna put this here as well. I am going to make this sweater because this sweater is out of a DK weight yarn and I think maybe I can make it if not I'll get her worsted uh, boxy but I, I want to make it out of this vintage yarn and I'm gonna make an a gleam out of this ZZ top uh, <laughs> ZZ top uh, the ZZ twist yarn 
And I think I'm going to make one of Jody from Grocery Girl Knits hats out of this yarn. But this is just uh, the colorways in here. They're just so cute. I think it'll make a very good and a very warm and a very soft hat out of this because it is a bulky yarn. So it'll knit up quick too. Uh, so I'm looking around and I think that's everything. I think that's everything that I wanted to touch on. Um, I don't know if in the intro, if I kind of introduced my complete self uh, to you guys. But just to wrap it up, just a few more things about me. Um, I do live in Charleston, South Carolina. I am originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. All of my family lives there except for my parents. They live in another part of North Carolina up by Asheville. And uh, we get to visit either them or my grandmother every few months. We get to go and visit. And I lived in Fayetteville for 24 years until I got married in 2010 and moved here. I will be 34 this year in October and I will be 34 crazy enough. Um, but I am really involved in my church. I'm actually going to start a knitting group at my church. Um, but I'm going to do more of a craft night where you can come and knit or crochet or cross stitch or whatever kind of yarn, fabric, hobby, crafty thing that you want to do that you can bring in and do all together. So we can just get together and hang out. Um, I am in charge of the preschool class for the children's ministry at my church. I love doing that. It's something that I love to do. Um, I do work from home. I am a housemaker, homemaker. I don't know what, whatever you want to call me. Um, I run an Etsy shop. You can check out my other YouTube channel. I'll leave it down below for my Etsy shop. And um, I make planner stickers. I'm involved as one of the admins for the local planner group here. And I get together with them as often as I can and hang out. Uh, what else? I run my husband's office. He puts up pre-engineered metal buildings and he is quite a bit older than me. Um, but you know, age is relative, you know, it's all in your head and the age that you feel is the age that you are. And I'm definitely feeling 33 this year. Definitely feeling it. So, um, anyways, I, I hope that you guys liked this podcast. For my first one, I hope I wasn't all over the place. Um, next time, I'm going to set up my camera and film um, with my better camera so I can get better angles for you guys. Um, but I hope that you, got, that you guys liked this. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you liked it. And I will be back in two weeks to show you what progress I've made, what new things I found, maybe some yarn hauls if I... Uh, went yarn shopping so I hope that you guys enjoy this video comment down below and let me know some ideas that you may have for future podcasts and uh, things that you want to talk about and I would love to get involved with you in Ravelry um, you can add me as a friend on there I also will link the Ravelry group down below I'll do a show notes thread here and in Ravelry and um Actually, there's not really many show notes. So in Ravelry, I will link the patterns. I'll create a show notes link and do um, links for the patterns and stuff. If I can figure out how to do that. You guys, I just started like hardcore using Ravelry like a few within the past month. So bear with me. Um, let me figure everything out. And if you have any uh, tips and tricks, you can follow me on Instagram and you can DM me and connect with me over there. My Instagram name for this YouTube channel is Sweet Southern World, and I will put that on the screen and also down below. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon, evening, uh, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!